In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a scale drawing so that you can size up your photographs ready for painting. Welcome back to the channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle and on my channel you'll find art tips and art business advice. So please consider subscribing. If you ring the little bell notification, then you'll get notified every time I post a new video and you won't miss anything. So in a minute, we're going to dive into an eight step process. It's really simple. I'm gonna point the camera downwards so you'll be able to follow along and see exactly how I do this. Now, all the time with drawing, I see beginners making the same mistakes. They don't make different mistakes. They all make the same mistakes. It's kind of an instinctive way that we all start trying to draw. And what we start trying to do is to draw from one point. So if we're drawing a face, we draw one eye and work outwards. If we're drawing a house in a landscape, we start with that house and then we work outwards. Now, the problem with this is you've got no idea of scale and proportion. And what happens is you make the house too big. Now, why do I say that beginners make houses too big, not too small? And the reason is that your brain instinctively knows that this is a very large object, so it's gonna make it bigger than it needs to be to fit on your paper. And what happens when you've made your house too big? Of course, then the landscape around doesn't fit on your paper. So the method I'm gonna show you today will ensure that everything fits in place and it overrides these instincts of your brain to zoom in on things and give them more space on the paper than they need to have. So now we're looking down at my drawing board and I've got some cartridge paper, pencil and eraser, a photograph to work from and I've got one of these, a not very clean T-square or a set square. Now all you need for this method is something with a right angle. So if you don't have one of these then you can just use another photograph that's been square cut or you can use a piece of paper, you can use a square palette if you have one or just some printer paper like this. So step one, you decide the rotation of your paper, by which I mean decide if you're going to draw with the paper um, upright in a, um, a portrait position, or if you're gonna have it sideways in a landscape position like this one, or if you're going to have it square. I mean, those are really the only three choices, unless you're doing some crazy round painting. You, your choices are portrait, landscape, or square. It may seem like a simple step, but it's one that many people overlook. And as I walk around my art classes, I see people painting tall vases on a paper that's landscape when it should just have been turned around. So the first thing to do is to check the rotation of your paper. In this case, I've got a landscape shape picture. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have our paper in a landscape shape. Step two, resizing your paper and retaining the same aspect ratio. So what do I mean by that? I mean that you're gonna mark out a larger area which this picture is going to fit into and it's going to be the same proportions. Now size doesn't matter, you can do it any size, it can be bigger, it could be smaller, but the aspect ratio must be the same, by which I mean that if you have got a long thin picture like this and you try to fit it in an area that is slightly squarer, it's not going to work. You're either going to stretch or you're going to squash down the proportions. So the first thing is to size up your paper maintaining the aspect ratio. So what you might do if this were, were a square photograph is you would place it in the corner and you just measure along, say you added 10 centimeters here and 10 centimeters here using some kind of set square. You could join these up and you would have a larger square picture. Now, when you get a photograph that's like this, that's longer than it is, is high, it's not a simple matter of adding the same amount of measurement to each side. And believe me, it took me years to figure this out because I'm pretty thick with maths, but it doesn't work. You don't end up with a picture that is of the same proportions. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to place the photograph in the corner there. You could use a little bit of tape if you wanted to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a diagonal line from here to here and we're going to continue it out. Now I have got a very large T-square that I use in the studio, but any long straight ruler or straight edge will do. So I'm going to place my T-square up here and it's in that corner there and it's going to come out the other side there and I'm going to continue this line down. So after we've got our line, then I want to just make a mark depending on how much bigger I want this picture to be. 
Now this mark could be anywhere, I could take it right out to the edge of the paper if I wanted to, but for now I'm just going to go to this point here, but you can literally pick any point along that line. And then what I want to do is I want to use a T-square or a right angle to drop a line down from each side. So I'm going to drop a line down from the top here, so I'm going to line up with the top of the paper and take the line down there. And then I'm going to line up from the far edge. This is a little bit too big for the, t for the set square, so I've got a T-square in my studio, so I'm going to use this. But really any straight edge with a right angle will do. And we're going to take this out like so. So now I have a new working area which is larger than the photograph but the proportions have remained the same and I can just now, if I want to, get rid of this line here. So now we're ready to start transferring this picture onto here and step three is to find the main dividing lines. Now what do I mean by that? Now I want you to look for any large objects in the picture. The horizon is, is a classic one, so I can look at the horizon here. I've also got the centre of the lighthouse here, maybe I've got the end of the building here, or the roof here. Try to avoid, if you can, sloping lines, you want these lines that go straight up or straight across and you're going to start marking those on your new area of work. So initially I'm going to look at this horizon line here. So I can start to look at it in terms of how far it comes along this side edge. So I'm going to ask myself, how far up is this line? Well, it's not halfway, is it? And if we looked at it in, a, in, sort of in terms of measurements, it's probably a third or slightly less than a third. Now, when you size pictures up, everything in terms of proportion remains the same. So if the angle of this roof were, say, you know, I'm completely making this up now, but if this angle of this roof were 20 degrees, then it would be 20 degrees no matter how large your picture was. Now, if this is a third, if this horizon is a third of the way up the picture, it's going to be a third of the way up, whether you do it two inches or whether you do it three or four foot on a big wall, it's still going to be a third of the way up. So the proportions and the angles don't change, which helps you to transfer this onto here. So the first thing we're going to do is make a, a mark for this horizon, and I'm going to say that it's just a little bit lower than a third. So this is not a super, super accurate way of transferring across. That would be using a grid or using tracing paper or scaling up with a computer. What we're looking at here is just not going so wrong that everything is, is in the wrong place. Now, another thing that I'm going to look at is the, uh, is the lighthouse here. So what I might do, and I'm going to use my set square again, is I might take a line through the lighthouse and see where it comes. So in an imaginary vertical line through the center of the lighthouse. Now I can see that it's more over to the right than it is over to the left. So again, this gives me a starting point on my paper here. So I'm going to take a line that's uh, a mark that's further over to the right than to the left. And I'll probably just drop a guideline down there. Now I can start looking at the horizon and how it goes across to the lighthouse. I might actually also start looking at how much space the lighthouse takes up. So it goes from here on the ground and how much of this area between horizon and the top of the picture does it go. If I look at this line here, which is this area here, how much space did it take up? So let's put a line across. It takes up over halfway but not so much over halfway. So I'm gonna make a little mark here, and that might be the area that my lighthouse fits into. Now, again, we're going to be uh, adjusting all of this as we go along, so don't press too hard. You just wanna look at putting these main, main objects in. Now, another thing I want to look at is this um, end of this house here, where it finishes. So again, I'm going to just use my T-square, my set square, and take a line up just have a think about that. It's, it's almost exactly halfway. I mean, I could put a finger mark there. Yeah, I would say it's halfway, perhaps very slightly to the left. So now I can look at my picture and think, you know, where is the halfway point? Maybe about here. Where does that house come to? Just slightly to the left, maybe here. And again, I'm going to drop 
roughly drop a guideline down and we're going to say for now subject to possible changes later on we're going to say that that house is going to finish about here so now I can start putting in some of the main objects now step number four is to check proportions so what do I mean by that what I mean is you can start to measure objects and compare them to other objects for instance I could measure the height of this lighthouse and compare it to the width of this house here or these houses so what you do is you get a straight object like this and you place the point against the top of the area you're trying to measure and then you slide your thumb down until it reaches the bottom and then you can take that measurement and you can measure other things to compare with you can measure the height of a house as opposed to the width of a house now often I see my students doing this okay it's no good because this moves you need to use a straight object like a ruler or a pencil works best of all so you find let's have a look for instance let's check the height of this little post here I don't know if you can see there's a, um, a sort of a telegraph pole there and we'll check the height of that compared to the height of the lighthouse you could check how many times the lighthouse fit into the paper you could check the height of the lighthouse compared to the width of the lighthouse all of this checking of proportions will enable you to get things more accurately placed on your paper so one of the things I can do is to check the angle of things for instance the angle on this roof line here it's rather deceptive it looks like it follows the line of the the hills there but I, I can't really tell if it goes up or down so what I want to do is I want to check this angle and see if I've drawn it accurately here so the way I do this is to use my pencil but of course if I just you know do this it's not very accurate and this could be anywhere and the angle could be anywhere so what I'm going to do before I use this method is I'm going to line the picture up with one of the outside edges this is really really important what you want to do is line it up to the, the place that's closest to where you're moving the angle to so in other words I want this as close as possible to where the angle is on the roof there but without the photograph covering it over so I'm going to place it down here you can line it up with the the bottom edge the top edge any of the side edges it doesn't matter as long as it's lined up with one of the edges so that we know that we're on the same plane that everything is going to transfer across and then all I'm going to do quite simply is lay my pencil along the line like that now I can see from there that the line does indeed slope downwards as mine does so what I'm going to do and it's not 100% accurate this this method but it will help you to see if your angles are completely wrong is I'm going to then just transfer that across and actually I think that the angle is probably even a little bit steeper than I've done it so this is my next stage stage five is I'm checking angles I can check the angles on this part of the roof here as well because I'm again I'm not entirely sure I've got those right so let's put it up here this time actually because we can get it a bit closer that way so I'm going to check the angle of the house roof there and again not far out perhaps we'll go a bit more like this so this is stage five and I want you to check your angles this is particularly important with big things like rivers and will help you to get them at the correct angle now step number six is to check object alignment what I mean by this is that you can see how things line up with other things on your picture to check if you've got them in the right place so I've made some adjustments to angles here but I'm uncertain if these things are still the right size or if they're in quite the right place so it's um, this this photograph's a particularly tricky one but often there are a lot more things that line up than this so if you were doing a figure for instance you could check you know you could take you could drop a line down from the chin and see if it lined up with say the right knee now it's important when dropping these lines down again that you use a right angle that you don't just use your pencil like this to check what's lining up with something else because as you can see it's all over the place it could be anywhere so you want to actually use a right angle so what I could do for instance is going back to this initial guideline that I made down the center of my lighthouse I could check what that lines up with and it almost lines up with the corner of the roof of this little house here so I can go back to my drawing then and see where I am with it and now I see once I've, I've dropped that line down 
I see actually that um, that it's possibly this this drop this building is possibly a little bit too far over to the left so that's an adjustment that I can make and I can move that so it's in the right place another thing I could do is looking at the edge of this white building here I can take this up and see how far away it is from the lighthouse or see how it intersects with these little buildings on the horizon and at the moment I think that this line here is possibly too far to the right and that this point here is also too far to the right so I'm going to shift everything slightly that way to improve the layout of it. So now I've double checked which things align with which other things and what lines up with what then I've got a little bit of a, a better idea. I've shifted these buildings to the left slightly and I've shifted these buildings to the right slightly so it's all a little bit more in proportion. Now it's really important with this step that you don't end up going down some kind of rabbit hole of accuracy. So it's easy to think, oh, well, if that lines up with that, that has to move, but if that moves, then that's wrong and that's wrong and this is wrong. And you know, you really can get completely lost at this stage of the drawing. So in the case particularly of landscapes and flowers and things that don't require as much accuracy possibly as figures, then you might want to accept that fairly good is good enough. So step seven, we've decided that we're quite happy with the layout. So step seven is to remove any guidelines because you don't want to get these trapped under further layers of paint or under further layers of shading. So even though we haven't quite finished the layout of the drawing, we've got these guidelines now, we don't need them anymore. And so we're gonna start getting rid of those. So step eight is where you add more detail to your drawing. Now the amount of detail you need to add depends on what you're doing with it. Now, if this is an underdrawing for a painting, and again, I wouldn't be on cartridge paper in that case, I would have been working directly onto my watercolor paper. But if this was an underdrawing for a painting, then I only want as much details as I need to show me where to put the paint. I certainly don't want to do anything like shading. If, however, this is a drawing in its own right, then you could at this stage start shading lights and darks and certainly adding more details. So anything you think you might need uh, more information on later, like windows and things like that. I mean, you can still see some of the mistakes and some of the, uh, some of the guidelines, even though I've rubbed them out. But to be honest, once you finish painting or shading this drawing, you won't see those at all. So my next stage is to add more detail. So to quickly recap, step one, we chose the rotation of the paper. Which way round should our paper go? Step two, we resized the paper, keeping the aspect ratio, so keeping the same proportions as the original photograph. Step three, we found the main dividing lines. We found the main areas that divided up our picture, such as the horizon, so that we could begin to build the bones of the drawing. At step four, we used the measurement of the pencil to check proportions of one object against another or the height of an object against the width of an object. Step five, we, step, we checked angles. So we used our pencil to line things up and to check the angles were correct on things like slanting roofs, um, horizon lines, things like rivers. We checked those using the pencil. Step six, we checked object alignment. So we checked what lined up, what was below and to the side of another object. If we take a line across to the side edges, always going back to the side edges, what lines up with what? And is that what's what happening in our drawing? Is it the same as what's happening on the photograph? Step number seven, we rubbed out any guidelines that we put in and step eight, we added details. So here is our finished drawing. It's far from perfect, but it's a fairly accurate rendition of what's going on in the photograph. Everything that's in the photograph has fit onto the paper nicely and it's ready for painting. If you're worried you won't remember anything that I've told you today, then I'll put a link in the description and you can pop over to my website and you'll find the written instructions that go with this video. Hopefully now you've got a much better idea of how to scale a photograph up into a decent sized drawing. Now do let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these methods or if any of this has been useful to you and if you're ready to take your creativity to the next level please do consider subscribing. If you press the little bell icon next to the subscribe button you'll get notified every time I post a new video. You won't miss anything and I will see you again in my studio soon.